I'm Dr. Pete Economo, the East Coast psychologist. And I'm Dr. Nikki Rubin, the West Coast psychologist. And this is When East Meets West. Well, there was always this campaign that said stress kills. And today we're going to discuss the impact of stress. Hey, Nikki. Hey, Pete. Wait, is that, was that from the 80s? I think so. <laughs> Nancy Reagan, maybe? Or was that, oh, that was drugs kill. No, that was, dr- that, that was drugs. drugs. <laughs> <laughs> right. That was like the one where like the, you crack, this is your brain on drugs. Like you yes. crack the eggs. But we could say that, well, I, I don't Stress wanna, leads I don't to wanna, drug use. It, it can't. It, it, it can. <laughs> it can. And also like maybe I don't want to freak people out like stress kills. Because I sometimes hear that from patients where they'll go like, oh, yeah. I'm not allowed to be stressed. Like it's going to you know, it's going to well, make Well, but it does. Health. It has a negative impact on physical health. So it on does. some level it kills. You and I have the same intervention we use where we say no one's died from anxiety. Correct. Right. Yes. And so yep. it's a similar sort of dynamic here. And so stress itself won't kill you, but the effects of taxing your body can over t- have yeah, over, over time. time. Yeah. yeah. So over the chronic time. impact of stress. So uh, yeah, I mean, I think this is a very relevant p- point of conversation mm-hmm. today. Nikki, do you ever feel stress? Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Do you? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I see. There's a bear poop in the woods. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'd say Pete, Pete and I are uh, frequently texting about our levels of stress. Yeah. Well, because <laughs> right? I, I, but I, I also think socially people will say things like, hey, how are you doing today? Good. You know, it, it's not something we're commonly saying, like, I'm really stressed. So I make a point to model. So I was just mm-hmm. talking to my research coordinator and she was like, so how are you, Dr. Pete? And I'm like, well, you know, it's it's a busy time of year. Yes. It's week three in the semester. And yes. oh, this is I, I recorded my lecture three times today. Why? Well, the first time the, the computer crashed, the second time I forgot to click record. Ah, <laughs> delightful. Delightful. And then the third yeah. time it worked, but then the file was too big. So then the extra level of stress was how do I make the file smaller? So there, stress is inevitable. It's inevitable. Well, and I think what I like about that example is, you know, if we think about stressors, so things that obviously cause stress on a spectrum, you know, though there are these like small stressors that we all are encountering all the time that add up, right? Like, you know, <laughs> you have to re-record something, yeah. you know, that I'm thinking like the printer breaks, right? You know, there's traffic. And then there are these these like let's call them like macro stressors, I guess. You know, obviously we're recording this during the time of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's an election coming up. Uh, you know, obviously currently on the West Coast here where, you know, there's like the fires. devastation of the fires, you yeah. know, down in Al- Alabama, there, there's a hurricane. There, there are some, I mean, there's obviously um, what's been going on uh, in terms of the racial justice movement. I mean, there yeah. are, there hey, are 2020. Lot. Thanks a hey, lot, tw- girl. Yeah, t- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like, yeah, you want to throw in, ma- you want to throw in macro stressors. So yeah. I think what I'm really curious to hear is, you know, first of all, how, how do you, how do you talk to patients about stress? Because I think, at least in my experience, I think sometimes people can have a hard time actually really like understanding and recognizing the stressors that exist in their environment and then the impact that that places. Like I see a lot of like self-invalidation, like the pandemic I keep bringing up with people like, yeah. okay, let's not forget we're in the middle of a global pandemic. Like right. that's having an impact on your brain. Yeah. So, so you're validating. So I think- I'm validating, yeah. Yeah. Normalizing and validating as I, you know, certainly in third wave cognitive behavioral therapy, mm-hmm. we spend a lot of time doing that. And yeah. I think for me, that's a skill because when we talk yes. to students about it, you know, and especially for any clients that are listening, not of mm-hmm. our own, but just cl- yeah. people in yes. general in yes. treatment, uh-huh. yep. you, you understand that this is a skill. It's a skill that we teach, but also it's, it's the reality of the human suffering, which brings mm-hmm. in the, yes, the, the true Eastern, Eastern experience yes. is that we all have, there's not, there's not a person in the world who doesn't have stress. Well, and it's interesting because I, I think that there's also a story that exists that you know, everyone right. sees someone again, I always bring in the social media, people are like, well, this person doesn't have stress. They have a perfect life or, yeah. you know, they, yeah. and it's, no, oh, they post and, their perfect life. Yeah. They post, <laughs> they post their perfect life. Yeah. yeah. They post their, well, yeah. So say more about, you know, how does, how does, um, Buddhism conceptualize stress? Like what would be like the language that's used? Like, yeah. I, I mean, I guess just this radical acceptance around it of, uh, you know, and, and I, I, well, it's, there's no real teaching on stress because the idea oh, is just, yeah, Suffer- well, not just that like I'm suffering? aware of. Yeah, suffering, exactly. Suffering, and, okay. And, well, and I guess the idea is just to make sure you take time to slow down. Mm-hmm. So one of my um, sitting community um, 
partners. She just retired and she was a chair of an academic department. And so mm-hmm. she's still sitting. And so we'll email back and forth once in a while because she's having some strong sympathy for me of like what it's like to chair a department during a pandemic and yes. just that academia and life in general has changed. And so, you know, one of her comments was like, I'm just so glad that I still see you sitting because mm-hmm. just to make sure you make the time for it. And so I think that's, that's the ultimate teaching is like, yeah, we always have time for the cushion. Uh, right. Right. And so to get, and what that means is we always have time to sit down and meditate. And I find that that's truthful. But like, say, for example, this morning, I didn't get to work out this week yet. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay, that's a lie. I worked out once this week. It's we're recording this on a Thursday. And so I did. Re- I did work out once. Mm hmm. But I usually like to work out at least every like, yeah, every two days. Yes. P- P- <laughs> and sometimes you like to do more than one workout back like to back. To, once yeah. in a while. Yeah. I do. Sometimes yep. I'm like, oh. You wouldn't tell yeah. by looking at our YouTube channel, <laughs> but I'm just saying. <laughs> that is I'm not, not true. <laughs> I'm not posting my ads on Instagram. <laughs> like, that's, that's my friend you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Don't you dare. I got your yeah, back. Yeah. That's you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Um, okay. Well, so, all right. So that makes sense. So, so Buddhism would more, it sounds like conceptualized like under the, um, umbrella of suffering and that, you know, you want to make time to basically take care of of yourself and and for stillness. So that was my point with working out because Uh this morning I was up in time. I definitely could have went. And then I just made the decision of sitting or working out and I sat because I, well, I just, I always take my barometer, you know, and so I, I I sit every morning, but sometimes longer than others. And I I sit with my community when I know I need a longer sit and maybe even a teaching Mm. accompanied with it. And so, you know, and that's okay. Right. So my stress this morning was acknowledging that creating space for it. And then, uh, you know, you do, I did feel better after yeah. I'm feeling a little fat and bloated today. So <laughs> that's that, you know, so I'll commit. So now I know I'll go, I'll definitely will work out tomorrow morning, you know? And so that's balance. That's, 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 that's that middle path that we talk about also. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, I'm, what was going through my mind as you were talking about um, making the space to sit and for stillness, Yeah. what I was thinking about is like a common kind of like refrain I'll hear when it comes to stress and my recommendation to patients, you know, for that, or not just patients, I don't know. Ourself. Loved one. Our family. Yeah. 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 My my friends um, is that when people are really stressed, I'll hear, but I don't have time for that. Like they're, they're so time to be stressed. Yeah. 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 I'm so stressed. I can't fit in anything else even if I like intellectually know that that's healthy for me. So like, you know, there is always time. Well, say more about that because I think people often have a hard time believing that. And I I mean, I know I, I mean, even myself, I know I've been, I am again, I'm a human with a human brain. So I, I too, I too have. have, You have uh, such a cute human brain. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, we, there's time for everything. I mean, that's just, I mean, I think maybe that's more of an Eastern thing. Mm -hmm. I was talking to a colleague recently who she said, um, you know, I'm going to share the compliment she gave me. She goes, you know, you, you do a lot and you do it with Mm -hmm. humility. And Mm -hmm. and sometimes um, I said to her, well, I, I, that's one of the best compliments I could ever receive. And I, I I thank my sitting for that Mm -hmm. because it's really about, you know, detaching from anything. So yes, we're busy and there's always time. So how how do you help someone? buy into that though because i think that's the sticky piece it's like people like i you know they're like like, no i i can't i've got too many things on my plate there's no way so there's always a five or ten minute there's always a five or ten minute window somewhere you can wake up five minutes earlier Mm -hmm. you can take a five minute lunch break Mm -hmm. um you can you know shut your device off 10 minutes earlier at night Mm -hmm. you know there's always ways that you can try you have to get creative you have to yes and and so i think creativity is a big piece of that but I, i sort of think about it with um there's that movie in that book, like he's just not that into you, you know, yes. even in terms of dating. It's like, yeah. there's even time for that where someone's like, yes. oh, they're so busy and they met. Well, there's, oh, there's time. Yep. When, when, when something fits and I find that mm-hmm. the universe is perfect, that's mm-hmm. also an Eastern belief. Yes. In its imperfections, right? Though? Correct. Like, yeah. Uh-huh. That, every, that, that 2020 is perfect. Right. Yes, so, we, well, and may, maybe you could like take a moment to, cause I'm thinking of like the, the, the broken cup uh, metaphor, that one about like, uh, in, tell like, us. I, right. I, I think like that, a, a, like a cup that's broken, like a, from like a Buddhist lens, they would say like that cup, that broken cup is perfect right? because it's like, it is, it's just being itself. It's kind just of. itself. Yeah, it's exactly. Itself. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, so it, it, that's part of the, there's koans in the Eastern world. And so the koans. I don't know that word. I don't well, know. the koans are, are, I guess it's sort of like the Torah or the Bible or the Quran in a way. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. They're stories yes. 
okay. that are uh, that don't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> And so the, the Zen and Buddhist way is to try and make sense of them because ah, everyone's perception cool. is different. So it'll, it'll say something like, um, does a dog have Buddhahood? Oh, interesting. The, my, my, my teacher loves that, that koan. And so just to kind of think about what, whatever that means, you know, mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm, and, and mm-hmm. there's, there's all different types of it. So the, the broken cup is perfect and 2020 is perfect because everything's imperfect. And so when yes. I can truly accept that, and I, I sound like a hippie and my clients often, you know, I joke with, and I, <laughs> about myself in that way because it does feel very granola crunchy. You know, well, I, I think that that's, that's another sort of story. And I, you know, I've shared this yeah. pos- podcast before. That was like a judgment I believed like many, many years ago. And it's like, in reality, it's, it's just actually about being with, with reality and what is. And right. so, you know, to pull stress back into it, it's like stress is a part of that. Like stress is, yeah. you know, and oh, yeah. so, right. Like, we're, and I think, you know, it's, this is a, kind of coming to my mind right now, uh, formulating as I'm, as I'm speaking here that that's I think what we do. Yes, yeah, what we do. That's right. That's what we do. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, as, as people sort of bought, like have trouble buying into this notion that they don't have space or they don't have a moment or they don't have time. Yeah. Um, I think that behavior, so here I am bringing in the Western behavioral science here, that behavior of like, no, 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 I have to keep doing, doing, doing instead of being, interestingly enough, functions as a way to avoid the discomfort, right, of of the stress that we're experiencing, right? Sure. Like we, we want to get away from it. We want to fix it. And one thing, you know, Pete and I talk about in this podcast a lot is this, this paradox that exists that, that obviously comes from the Eastern traditions here that we borrowed in cognitive behavioral therapies, which is when we actually pause yeah. and make space for the discomfort, right? So including stress, like allowing space to acknowledge it, to normalize it, to feel it, to be still, yeah. it actually like softens the edges around the experience of it. Yeah. You know? we, we, I, yeah. Like holding on to this porcupine. If I squeeze, Ooh, I like that. if I squeeze, it hurts. If I just rest the porcupine in my hand. Ooh, I'm stealing that metaphor. Woo. A, I yeah. love that one. <laughs> well, and sometimes I grab the actual ball. Like if you have a tennis ball in your office or something. Mm, yeah, and so think about it. Yes. If you put, if you picture what it would look like, yes. the porcupine hurts when you squeeze, but if you don't squeeze, She's gonna rest there. Yeah, she's, she's. I really, I'm really gonna be using that later today in my sessions. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Thank so in you. 2017, the American Psych Association, they, they, you know, and there, there are many organizations that study stress, and and interestingly, the number one uh, cause of stress was the future of our nation in 2017. Mm. So I think that's an interesting thing to bring up today because I think we feel 2020 is this like apocalypse with all the things going mm-hmm, on, mm-hmm. including race relations in the nation and the, and, the, yes. and the future of our nation for some folks uh, that back, you know, in 2017, this, which means the delay, the data were collected in like 2016 at least. Yes, you know? yes. And so uh, money was number two work. So actually future of our nation, money and work were like 63%, 62% and 61%. So they were right mm-hmm. up there one through three. Yep. So I think that those, are things that most people, and if I think about today as we record this, future of our nation, money and work yes. are totally relevant. Uh, absolutely. And and I'm I'm imagining that there are people listening thinking, okay, yeah, you know, uh, Nikki and Pete, I, I know that already. Like I know right. these are stressors, right? Like how am I supposed to to deal with it? You know, and I think maybe something that we want to weave in here, in addition to maybe talking about in a moment, some concrete steps that you can do to help create space, right? And a way right. to, as a way to, um, you know, to, to ground ourselves and, and, and regulate a little bit. I think we also want to bring in this idea of radically accepting uncertainty, which of course we have a whole podcast episode <laughs> called sure uncertainty do. where we talk about that. Um, so if you want to learn more, that's a more in-depth discussion of that, but you know, that's episode 17. Oh, it's a, <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you. Um, but the reason why it's so important to accept that we can't, we can't control what's going to happen. Like we can't figure out what's going to happen, no, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. We have to just come back to dealing in the now, right? Yeah. That, that's actually a really important component of regulating and tolerating stress, which again, seems um, counterintuitive, right? To say like, I've got 
I got to let go of knowing what's happening tomorrow or how the election is no. going to turn out or when the pandemic is going to end. that's where the porcupine comes in. It, correct. Yes. Because <laughs> otherwise, yeah. otherwise I'm holding on, on to same, <laughs> otherwise on the I'm, same page I'm yeah. holding that porcupine so tight because I'm trying to create or hold on to control what the future is. Yes. And a lot of us, we do, do, do to yes. create that. And yes. frankly, the paradox is we're saying, let's, let's don't, let's, don't, don't. Yes. Let's, let's, let's stop, let's stop, be. stop. Yes. Let's just let's, be... Let's yes. create calm. And, and I think that that's because, you know, stress. So we, we started by saying stress kills and there are multiple symptoms related with stress, like fatigue, headache, yes. issues with the GI tract, muscle tension, changes in yes. appetite, teeth grinding. Yes. You, know, you see things like uh, people with like restless leg syndrome or things yes, like so that. Say, d- difficulty concentrating. Yes. I was gonna say, right? going, uh-huh. yeah. yeah. Difficulty concentrating, um, not in like not deriving joy or pleasure out of things. I mean, right. some of these, by the way, start to also um, sound similar to uh, anxiety and depression. By well, the way, of course. Right? Well, right? And, I, and there's likely research to support correlations between increased stress lead to increased depression and anxiety. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Um, and so, again, I just want to keep reinforcing that by making space for yeah. th- these things, by acknowledging it without actually trying to um, – totally rid ourselves of the stress, right? Like by trying to figure out what's going to happen or saying, I can't pause by actually just holding the porcupine and coming back to this moment and making room to contact what is, it softens the edges, right? It It actually, which is just, it's, it's so hard for our minds to to intellectually understand that that human you know? brain oh you know i just get i mean brains are cool but they so nikki what some are some other stuff. strategies that you use with yourself loved ones and or clients yes well i think you know in addition to what you've already been uh sharing in terms of you know mindful practice and being still i mean that it does you know, yeah. i've said before like all roads lead to mindfulness you know like <laughs> yeah. that's, that that, yeah. that is sort of like my first follow the mindful brick road yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, was- yeah you should do <laughs> That's cute. You that's should, a thing. Yeah, that's a thing. Yeah, that's a thing. Um, it's also actually just like finding small moments to do something. I think that feels soothing or a, mo- a small moment of connection. I think sometimes yeah. when we're really stressed or we're really burned out, of course, what we do is we fantasize about, you know, being able to like take that amazing vacation or like, you know, have a wonderful, you know, I don't know, date night with our partners or like hang out with our best friends. And maybe those things aren't possible, especially, you know, given what's going on right now. So uh, what I'll tell people is like, look, do the small things that th- there can be like a cumulative effect, just like there's a cumulative effect of stress, like yeah. all the little annoying stressors add up, all the little lovely things add up. So like actually sure the other do. day I was telling um, uh, one of my best friends uh, who you know, is like us all dealing with a lot of stress. She's got a s- small child at home. And I said, you know, this might sound silly, um, but I was like, can you like take five minutes and like take your coffee out on your deck and just yeah. like have your coffee by yourself, you know, for five minutes, um, like when your husband's got the, got, got your kid and, and, you know, she was like, you know what? Yeah, I can do that. I've not been doing anything like that. That's right. Um, so it's like things like that, like, you know, being, you know, again, sometimes like I'll, I don't know, like I'll take my lunch outside you know what I'm saying? Yeah. For 10 oh, of minutes. course. You know what Most, I mean? Well, and, that, and that's why, that's why that goes back to the point of we all have time for this. And yes, you know, I, I think to normalize it even more, 74% of people have felt stressed and so much so that they report feeling overwhelmed or unable yes. to cope. Uh-huh. Yep. And I think everyone listening can relate to that where we've all had moments and I'll just share like this summer, it was, it was a busy summer and as an academic, yes. we're usually much quieter. And I took on the book and so like in addition to everything else, I was writing a lot. And so there were moments of like, wait, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I am unable to get through this. Of course. Right. Thoughts of like course. that. And, and, and it's just so part of the human experience. And, and that also brings in the Zen that the Eastern piece, I wanted to also make sure we talked about you stress because we're saying it's very negatively. Yes. And there is this term you stress, E-U-S-T-R-E-S-S. And there are some positive stressors. Mm-hmm. So stress is not just about negative events. That's a very good point. Yes. So that's things right. like weddings, for example, which is always, the, uh, yes. that's always uh, the um, best example. Yeah, yeah, yep. uh, they, they cause the same amount of stress and the same impact that a negative, that these you know, global events can also have on us. So I just wanted to make sure we talked about that too. Well, I'll throw in there, um, cause it's, again, as per usual, uh, on the same wavelength and shocker. something, a shocker uh, that I share with patients a lot, um, that, it's, it's basically, I'll say it this way. The reason those, that is a stressor is because change is a stressor. 
Yes. Even changes that we want, even changes that we like That's that right. for the brain, when we go from something comfortable and familiar and, you know, practiced, and then we're in a new context, even a context that we, we enjoy or want that shift is a stressor on the brain. And so, mm -hmm. and maybe Pete, you remember what this is with the example I use with patients. Is there's some psychological measure that I can never remember the <laughs> name of that measures stress that basically like has the ones that you would think like divorce, like losing a job. Yeah. You're like, oh yeah, those would be stressors. But then they have things like getting married, buying yeah. a home. And what I always tell the patients is that if you, as if you're coding that when you're, um, when you're scoring it, the, the positive stressors and the negative stressors or events are right. weighted the same, That's meaning right. that they're equally stressful on the brain. And so, yeah, important to keep that in mind too. So do you, yeah. do you know the name of that? Am I, do you remember? The, I no. Know. <laughs> producers, <laughs> producers, where are you? So as we just end, just thinking about the idea that stress is normal, uh, trying to build this connection between your mind and body, slow down, take some small moments, and all things lead to mindfulness. So remember everybody, follow the mindful brain road. This has been When East Meets West. I'm Dr. Pete Economo. And I'm Dr. Nikki Rubin. Be present, be brave. This has been When East Meets West. All material is based on opinion and educational training of Drs. Pete Economo and Nikki Rubin. Content is for informational and educational purposes 